for those of you waking up, those of you staying up, and everyone in between, welcome to the virtual Heidelberg Laureate Forum. Traditionally, we would be greeting an auditorium of participants here in Heidelberg, but this year we are able to address an audience dispersed all around the world. We are very excited about the multifaceted program and the discussions that the sessions will inspire. The event app has an array of tools to optimize your experience, and we encourage you to familiarize yourselves with the capabilities. If you have any questions regarding sessions or the app, visit the help desk for answers and solutions. Please be sure that you have activated the chat function in your profile under the privacy in order to network and receive updates. All news will be sent via push notifications. The session schedule has shifted slightly, so we ask everyone to check the current program in the app and pay close attention to the start times. For those of you active on Twitter, please use the hashtag displayed here. Enjoy the opening gala, which begins with a mosaic of greetings from participants in their native language. We are excited to welcome everyone to the virtual HLF and look forward to traversing separation together. Herzlich willkommen zum virtuellen Heidelberg Lobby Forum. Namaste, Apka HLF 2020 mein swagat hai. Aasha karte hain aapka anubhav achcha rahega. Bueni, akka ko ni mai jile. Ati awo jo bo wagba ni mai jile. Muki ka bossi itwa kuro HLF 2020 ji. Si chao. Sejam bem-vindos. Olá, pessoal, cara. Alô, semuanha. Selamat datang. Apa kabarnya? Bom, bom, dá aí, chamo, pim, pim, quase, ele. Não pensa aí, xê. Não dança ali, não. Hi, there. Marhaban. É caro. É com o Jumo. É o Rambinho. É com você, Tua. Olá. Oroka. Moin. Mabuha está em Yong Lahat. Hola, muy buenas tardes. Namaste. Assalamu alaikum. Me anida is har malik. HLF me aap sabhi ko tahe dil se khush amdeed kehte hum. Bao nyo. Ekabo. Ako jumao. Hi. Bonjour. सभी आदरणीय उपस्थित बंधु जनों को यमन कुमार का नमस्कार हाइडलबर्ग लॉरियट मंच में आप सभी का हार्दिक स्वागत Bienvenidos. It's a THLF 2020. Hello. Karibu ni sana. Hola, buen día para todos. Aquí en Cabo. Ni aweizo. Namaste. Mira naam Diksha hai. Or mein Bharat se. E Cabo. Hello. Buti. Are you born? No, no, no. Hello, a cabo, a cojo, a cabo, CHL, a bad way. Puna ziwa. A cabo. Inchila. Matati pomimia pomizum. Pesselishi iping selina. 
Ma un chien de mgue, à l'île aïcho, à pingolo outi. Et quoi beau, ça la fia à l'éwa. Nyena. Et kabou. Namaskara. Ellerigou, Heidelberg Laureate Forum, Yarat Savada Ipataka, Suswagatagou. Ibe balie, Ndeo no. Mamma. Ciao a tutti e vi auguro una bellissima edizione del Heidelberg Glory Forum, sono sicuro sarà fenomenale e bellissima. Grazie a tutti, ciao! Di Bania che ne amo no, Iria, Rieno, Ia, Cagiano, Ia, Macano, Ia, Ndeo no, Ubo si omano, una sala ci. Dear young researchers, dear laureates, dear guests of the Heidelberg Laureate Forum, ladies and gentlemen, willkommen, bienvenue, welcome. I have the great pleasure to welcome you to the opening gala of the 2020 virtual Heidelberg Laureate Forum. I'm Günther Ziegler. I'm a mathematician. You might know me as a co-author of Proofs from the Book. I'm also a member of the board of the Klaus Cherra Foundation and I'm your host for this opening gala 2020 HLF. I'm also the president of Freie Universität Berlin, and in this function I welcome you here in our largest lecture hall, the Max Kade Auditorium, a historic place where just outside this building in 1963, John F. Kennedy made an important speech about the role of the universities, where he said that this university and any university should not strive to educate skilled accountants, but to educate citizens of the world. In these times of corona, where things are far apart and tend to fall apart, citizens of the world, including the mathematicians and the computer scientists, have to strive to traverse separation. And that's the motto for this Heidelberg Laureate Forum in this special year, traversing separation. Let's go for it, let's work for it, let's hope that this week of mathematics and computer science also contributes to that. And with this, as the first speaker in this opening gala, I hand the mic virtually, of course, from Berlin to Heidelberg, from me to Beate Spiegel, the chairperson of the Heidelberg Laureate Forum Foundation and the managing director of the Klaus Cherra Foundation, she greets us from Villa Bosch in Heidelberg, the headquarters of the Klaus Cherra Foundation. Beate, this is for you. Traditionally, I would stare out into an audience of over 400 faces, extend a warm welcome and thank everybody for their presence at the Heidelberg Laureate Forum. A visible excitement for the week to come was on each of their faces. This year, I'm looking into a camera, extending that same welcome to an unseen audience. Invisible, but just as present, just as excited, connected by a shared passion, an appreciation for mathematics and computer science. To all of you, the young researchers, guests, members of the press, speakers, and naturally the laureates, welcome to the virtual HLF, Traversing Separation. Without your collective admiration for these disciplines, the Heidelberg Laureate Forum simply would not exist, physically or virtually. For that, thank you. We also extend our gratitude to the various institutions that help make the HLF possible. The pandemic has altered our reality and we are working to adapt to a different world. For some of us, those adjustments have been cosmetic changes to our everyday lives. For others, they have lost loved ones, have been totally displaced or find themselves in actually dire conditions. Our hearts go out to those in despair. We hope they are able to summon the strength and endurance to push forward. On top of this year's tribulations, we lost a dear friend and avid patron of the HLF to cancer, Anne-Marie Astad of the Norwegian Academy of Science and Letters. Anne-Marie's spirit and fortitude left an immediate and lasting impression on all of us and she will dearly be missed. 
Loss is measured by the impact people leave behind. Coping with that loss is one of life's toughest challenges. We grow most when tested. We are being tested. Trials effort opportunity for growth, for improvement. We have the chance to shed the skin of normalcy and try new methods. That is precisely what the virtual HLF is experimenting with a new approach. A digital conference and its exchanges cannot replicate the richness of a live event with personal eye-to-eye -eye discussions. We are naturally looking forward to the eighth HLF in 2021, if circumstances permitted to safely take place. That said, we have worked tirelessly to make the virtual HLF an inspiring and rewarding experience. We have done so while navigating what were, in many ways for us, uncharted waters. This investigation of the unfamiliar has reinforced the bonds within our team, creating more rapport in the crew. So we invite you to enjoy the ride along with us as we explore what we have plotted. We are not alone on this voyage. Laureates from mathematics and computer science are contributing to the program in various ways. Though we receive immense support from the laureates each year, the encouragement we received entering this current conditions has been essential. We are very grateful to have them on board as we investigate these waters. A digital platform offers some unique opportunities that are simply not possible at a physical conference. Principle among them is connectivity. Today, we have never been more unified, never been more able to experience something as one collective, one community. Clearly, we have a long way to go before ensuring that all areas of our planet and every population are online. However, we are living in a world that is more integrated than ever, communicating with unprecedented fluency. Another distinct asset is rooted in this integration. Normally, participation in the HLF is restricted to those invited or who have been selected. For the virtual HLF, many of those restrictions were foregone, opening participation up to a wider audience. Emphasis was placed on using this chance to bring new participants together with alumni who have experienced the actual event and can offer insights. A compass is necessary when charting new territory and knowledge provides the most reliable coordinates. Even with a dependable map, the future remains a mystery a truth easily forgotten in times of complacency and amplified in times of uncertainty. Uncertainty generates anticipation. Anticipation becomes experience and experience paths the road to learning. Though I may not be able to read the anticipation and excitement on your faces, I know that it's there, invisible but evident. It's our common thread, it stems from curiosity, is woven throughout science and binds all of us together. In that way, we invite you to traverse the separation and share this experience with us. Welcome to the virtual HLF. This was Beate Spiegel and from her I'm handing over to Andreas Reuter. He's the scientific chairperson of the Heidelberg Laureate Forum Foundation. And he's speaking to us from Mainz, the Mathematik und Informatik Station, a building where they host exhibitions. Um, this summer, an exhibition of mathematics and music, which will restart and reopen 1st of October. And the next one then will be an exhibition about artificial intelligence, which had to be moved again due to the special circumstances from this year to next year, but it will happen. Artificial intelligence is happening, as we all know, and it's growing increasingly important. Now, this is Andreas Reuter. Good morning, good day, good afternoon,
good evening, good night. Please pick the phrase most adequate to your time zone. Dear laureate, young researcher, member of the alumni organization, guest visitor, I'm doing my best to envision an audience I can talk to, but honestly, it doesn't work. Apart from the fact that this is a recording anyway, even at the moment it will go live, the audience, quote unquote, will be scattered around the globe watching from different environments, experiencing different delays, losses in image quality, just getting up or about to go to sleep, the special impression of convening in the same place, sharing a joint agenda, will not be there. And I won't get any feedback from looking at the participants. And what is even worse, I can't walk around while talking in my usual fashion because the camera people want me to stay put. My technical background in computer science is distributed systems where the scenario I just sketched is the normal situation. So I really should not have any problems with this, right? Well, abstract processes operating somewhere in the nodes of a huge network are one thing. Humans are different. A process you can't look in the eye. But somebody is already working on fixing that, maybe. Of course, once the decision had been made to organize HLF in cyberspace instead of the real one as usual, for reasons that certainly don't need any further elaboration, all this is just a simple consequence or a collateral damage, depending on your perspective. And everybody knows that. Virtual meetings have become commonplace recently in all walks of life. As a consequence, the term virtual is being used in so many different ways that it makes sense to pause for a moment and ask what it really means beyond the fact that people are sitting in front of a screen. Virtual stems from the Latin word virtus, referring to, I quote, moral strength, high character, goodness, manliness, valor, bravery, courage in war, excellence, worth, effectiveness, end of quote, all with respect to men, because the first three letters, V-I-R, are the Latin word for man. The English virtue over time became a collective term for all positive, desirable traits in men and women, and so I think we don't have to worry about the original root anymore. The adjective virtual originally described everything, quote, effective with respect to inherent physical virtues or capabilities. With the focus being more on the effect than the capabilities, the meaning gradually changed to being something in essence or effect, though not actually. In the context of computers, virtual refers to something not physically existing, but made to appear by software. So, honoring the lineage of the word virtual, we should say that a virtual HLF is something that exhibits all the relevant properties, virtues, of a real HLF without being one. Whether or not such a claim is valid depends, of course, on what must be viewed as the virtues of an HLF. When I think back to the first discussions I had with Klaus Schierer about the idea of organizing something that eventually became the Heidelberg Laureate Forum, we envisaged a casual workshop where people would have time to sit down and discuss life, universe, and everything with a special emphasis on mathematics and computer science, where ad hoc conversations would be encouraged, intermingled with technical presentations, where dinner tables would turn into whiteboards for sketching new ideas, and so on. You get the common theme of all this, the unfettered face-to-face -face communication among researchers sharing a passion for knowledge. This simple ad hoc face-to-face -face exchange does not translate easily into cyberspace, but it can be made work. We arranged for a variety of platforms, inviting the participants, enabling them to get involved in conversations, providing them with means for starting discussions, 
both ad hoc and structured. There are the question and answering sessions to begin with. There are the office hours offered by the laureates. There are the topical discussion groups that can be initiated by the young researchers. There is the virtual reality space where everybody can meet with and talk to everybody else. The choices are manifold. Utilize the possibilities to the best of your interests. My plea is very simple. Become an active participant and not just a remote user. Even the real HLF, the very special HLF spirit, depends on all the participants joining in, adding their perspectives to the discussions, connecting with the other participants. In this virtual HLF, the participants don't share the same physical space, so the hurdles are arguably a bit higher. But in order for the most important aspect of each ALF, the spirited exchange among the participants, to become alive in the digital domain, it is important for each of you, laureate or young researcher, to participate, engage, and contribute. In that sense, I wish you a successful, inspiring week. As in all the years before, we have to mourn the loss of laureates who passed away since the seventh Heidelberg Laureate Forum. Please observe a minute of silence in the honor of John Tate, Louis Nirenberg, Francis Allen, and Sir Vaughan Jones. Thank you. Thank you, Andreas Reuter. This also is the last year where Andreas Reuter appears as the scientific chairperson of the Heidelberg Laureate Forum Foundation. Successor has been named, but is still secret and will be announced later. But what I can announce now is Kirsten Feiler, Alexandra Schneider, Regina Degado and Anne Braunstein. Together they are Balanced Action, a saxophone quartet which actually has been the sound and has produced the sound of HLF since the beginning of the Heidelberg Laureate Forum. They play for us a piece called In the Mood, illustrated by images from Heidelberg, a lovely city in the southwest of Germany. So enjoy Balance Action, In the Mood and Heidelberg. Thank you.
So I hope you are in the mood. We now come from balanced action to political action. Delivered by Anja Karliczek, the German Federal Minister for Education and Research. Liebe Frau Spiegel, lieber Herr Professor Reuter, liebe Theresia Bauer, dear laureates, dear students. The COVID-19 pandemic has been a test of strength and endurance to our healthcare system, our public administration, to teachers and students, to all citizens. And our lives have changed within the last few months in a way that none of us had expected. We work hard to overcome this crisis. There's one group in particular that plays a crucial role on the forefront in our fight against the virus, the scientists. Around the globe, researchers are working under extreme pressure to develop treatments and vaccines against COVID-19 so that we can eventually live our normal lives again. It will be a new normal. How will this new normal look like? There is extensive research being conducted on this topic. It becomes clear that there will be long-lasting impacts on mobility, on care, on logistics, and other aspects of our daily lives in a post-pandemic world. But the fact that I am actually able to speak to you, to such a group of young and outstanding international researchers, and to distinguished laureates, is a testimony to the resilience of science itself. Researchers find ways to join forces, to analyze, to discuss and to progress. And I would like to thank you for all that. During this pandemic, one thing has become clearer than ever. When we are facing a collective threat like COVID-19, cooperation across borders, but also across disciplines, are absolutely crucial for rapid success. One key aspect that unites most of the academic fields today is the ever-increasing amount and complexity of scientific data and the challenge to interpret these large data sets in order to transform data into information and information into knowledge. Thus, mathematics and computer science are of ever-increasing importance. They often provide the means to unlock new insights and help us to tackle some of the most pressing issues. I would like to briefly showcase the potential of mathematics and computer science in the context of e-health and the corona crisis. At the onset of the pandemic, my ministry was quick to react. We provided additional funding for networking, data sharing, and for research projects in computational modeling, simulation, and optimization to tackle some of the complex challenges posed by COVID-19. We founded a common data infrastructure among all German university hospitals. Now medical informatics professionals work alongside hospital staff to use and to share medical data across all participating hospitals. Modern algorithms and machine learning methods are being developed to help us improve our understanding of the coronavirus and its socio-economic impact so that we can predict its spread or optimize the stability of power grids and the logistical for essential goods. These examples show the enormous potential of mathematics and computer science, not only for healthcare, but also for many other sectors of our society. I'm very pleased to see that many young and talented individuals are pursuing careers in these exciting fields. Ladies and gentlemen, my last point is related to the upcoming hot topic session of the virtual Heidelberg Laureate Forum. The importance of science communication. Communicating complex scientific results to broad audiences can be very difficult. This certainly includes highly complex research in mathematics and computer science. You know that what I'm talking about. Nonetheless, we need more scientific voices in our public discourse, on the internet, on social media, and in our daily encounters. This is why I would like to encourage you, share your research with people outside the scientific world, so that we can all reach a deeper understanding. With this being said, I wish you many fruitful discussions at this virtual Heidelberg Laureate Forum.
Federal Minister Anja Karliczek is now followed by Theresia Bauer, the Minister of Science, Research and the Arts of the State of Baden-Württemberg. You know that there's mathematics competitions and computer science competitions. In Germany, a federal state, we also have an annual competition between the ministers of science, and Theresia Bauer has won this competition three times in a row. She's talking to us from Mathematikon, a very innovative building that connects science, companies, and the public. It has an imaginary gallery of mathematical images right in a shopping center. It's a building that opened five years ago. It was also financed by the Klaus Scherer Foundation. So this is Theresia Bauer from Mathematikon in Heidelberg. Esteemed laureates, dear scientists, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the state of Baden-Württemberg, welcome to the 2020 Heidelberg Laureate Forum. As with everything in the year 2020, this virtual HLF looks a bit different than what we are used to. That is why I'm speaking to you from the Mathematikon in Heidelberg. This is the home of the universities in mathematics and computer science institutes. Like the Heidelberg Laureate Forum itself, this building was made possible through the support of the Klaus Chira Foundation. And like the HLF does every year, the Mathematikon was built to bring together our brightest minds in mathematics and computer science. So, with the goal of the virtual HLF being traversing separation, we are carrying on with this idea. Connecting with each other is more important now than ever, and not only for global science and research, but for each of us personally. Yet this HLF is not just an online chat and meetup. This past year has pushed mathematics and computer science into the spotlight like never before. Have you ever heard so much public discussion about exponential growth curves? Yet the coronavirus pandemic is only adding to the list of global challenges we are dealing with today. Global health, climate change, and the continuing digital and AI revolution are all rapidly growing concerns in our world. After months spent at home with many of us stuck looking at computer screens, we can all agree we need our mathematicians and computer scientists more than ever. I can assure you that we in Baden-Württemberg are doing our best to help with these global crises. Just this past week, I spent time with Professor Bernhard Scholkopf discussing AI and medicine at our Cyber Valley Research Center in Tübingen. And researchers across Baden-Württemberg, and particularly at our Life Sciences Cluster in Heidelberg, are hard at work on solutions for this pandemic and the future of health. With this year's HLF hot topic being focused on e-health, I'm hopeful that you may help to inspire and provide some creative solutions as well, because 2020 has shown that we need creative minds, we need crisis problem solvers, and we need math and computer science. So with that in mind, enough listening to me, you have work to do. To close, thank you once again to the Chira family and foundation and all of the laureates, scientists and supporters who made this virtual Heidelberg Laureate Forum possible. I wish you all great inspiration and fascinating discussions. And we look forward to seeing you all again in Heidelberg next year. From the voice of Theresia Bauer, the science minister, we are coming to the voices of the young scientists, the young researchers. They will now not speak to us, but sing to us. Ode an die Freude, the Ode to Joy from Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. Ludwig van Beethoven has his 250th birthday this year, and he's one of the people who, with his music, brings us together. Now, in this year where the Heidelberg Laureate Forum is trying to traverse separation, 
Now everybody comes together, the young researchers choir with the O to joy. With this music, we come to the end of the opening gala for the 2020 Virtual Heidelberg Laureate Forum. The opening gala will be followed by interviews with representatives of the prize awarding institutions, the Association for Computing Machinery, the Norwegian Academy of Sciences, and the International Mathematical Union, with laureates from the major prizes in mathematics and computer science. For me, it's time to say goodbye. It was a great pleasure to welcome you all from Berlin to host the opening gala for the Heidelberg Laureate Forum. All the best wishes and have a great week. <laughs>